Right, hello. Good, I guess, afternoon now. Right, I'm Chuan Fu, I'm a PhD student here from University of Manchester. So I'll be here talking about a project about uh, towards the automated construction of kinetic metabolic models with the software called Trade. So, I mean, everyone here is start all doing modeling work, and so everybody <coughs> know the, the modeling co community has sort of come a long way now with various techniques, and all of them has like provided various insights for all, everyone in the research. So, however, and it goes well saying kinetic models are very useful. Everyone uh, here has presented uh, different types of uses of kinetic models. But however, the ratio of this is not <coughs> quite balanced among static models, like for all these flux balance analysis models. And on top of that, the large scale kinetic models is still not quite commonplace amongst other researchers. So, my work here is actually sort of developed like a, a simple a tool that like essentially to help uh, eas easily build a large scale kinetic integrative model. So, when I say integrative model, I mean like a s model that will be informed by various. Uh, omics type of data, so it can be proteomics, metabolomics, and fluxomics. And if, if you have transcriptomics, it can be used as well. And uh, then the software will then be able to generate more in the uh, SPML format, which can then be exported into uh, important, sorry, important into capacity for uh, various analysis that can be done inside capacity. So as a proof of concept, previously my group, uh, they, the script was developed uh, and was able to generate two papers, two models, essentially. So the top paper is, uh, sim as a demonstration, they developed a s simple yeast glycolytic model, and then the bottom paper is a, a genome scale kinetic model of microbacterium tuberculosis. So the general strategy of the previous grape is the use of a reversible mechanical equation in random binding order. So the example equation here is for a uh, simple unimolecular to unimolecular uh, uh, reaction. So the, uh, the A and B hide the blue circles are the substrate and products. So A will be substrate and B is the product. So they're the metabolic concentrations that you will be, uh, you will hopefully have the value to sort of be informing the model and B is the real reaction of flux. So how great sort of build the model for the, parent, the estimation process it, it was solve the B locally, so it just solved them by individual reaction through the uh, method of genetic algorithm. So with the, they just solving the V, it would just informing the model uh, through flux values. So to, to address this issue, I replaced the uh, the mechanistic the simple re reversible mechanistic equation with the convenience kinetics, or uh, developed by uh, both from Lippermeister and Edda Clip. So it is essentially a generalized uh, mechanism and equation still, but it is uh, much more scalable in terms of stoichiometry as well. And it has fewer parameters. So when it comes to parameter estimation, it has it will be placing a few as uh, lesser burden on it, on your computation or everything as well. So on top of it, it has an effect prefactor, which allows an easier introduction of modifiers into the model building for the different reactions. So, uh, and as I, as I mentioned, the uh, proteomics is a possibility to be added into the model construction. So in order to allow for kinetic models to make use of protein data, which hopefully will be a time cost series data, uh, I've introduced uh, the s a simple uh, protein kinetics equation, which is, uh, yeah, so however, for my case at the moment, I do not have transcriptomic data. So the, uh, uh, the front bit for the synthesis bit, which is usually supposed to be a translation rate multiplied with RNA concentration, but as I said, I do not have RNA data, so I've just replaced it with the simple synthesis rate with just one parameter. Uh, so for the bit of the parameter estimation, I still kept the idea of using genetic algorithm, but the beauty of genetic algorithm <coughs> is that it is easily customizable, but and the core of it would still always be the fitness measurement, so I've just, to address the idea that it was just uh, making use mainly of the flux values, I've changed the fitness measurement method to use neutralism algorithm, which would be solving for the steady states of the metabolic concentrations, and on top of it, I've added the 
uh, system, uh, as being an ODE software library, so lib to be able to solve the system of the ODE equations. So yeah. Uh, so this jet I'm going to be talking about and to, to run it through briefly is essentially a classic heuristic method for uh, that uses the basic principles of Darwinian evolution. So in my case, that uh, the, the, uh, as an example of how it works, you start a population and then which is uh, a set of parameters, and it will then mutate, <coughs> produce, and be selected on the fitness, which is as like I was saying earlier, the fitness measurement. It will make which would be the ability of after solving the, the equations, the model, to be able to fit into whatever input data that you have. The more you have, the, it will be more uh, accurate in the sense, more informative. So it can be the metabolic concentration of values and the enzyme values. So uh, as sort of like a demonstration on my side as well, I mean the previous scrape has uh, did two models as to demonstrate its, how its functionality. So I'll be uh, building a kinetic model for yeast metabolism, starting with just kind kind of just small glycolytic model. It, it will eventually be scaled up to wholesale and well, not quite wholesale genome scale. Sorry. Uh, then the reason for choosing yeast is because there is this project called the Census of Protein of the Yeast, the copy project, which is aims to uh, for absolute quantification of at least four thousand proteins which they make use of this method of QCONCAT. <coughs> and one of the particular data that I'm working with is heat stress time cost protein data. And th though this is not quite the direct uh, data that's from COPY project, it uses the absolute quant uh, quantity uh, that came from COPY project to be able to calibrate the label free proteomics data of this heat stress. So how they this hit, what, what do I mean by heat stress? Essentially, the yeast is grown at 30 degrees Celsius up to meet exponential waste, which is then transferred to 37 degrees Celsius. And, and every sort of science talk, people need graphs. I, my work is still in progress, so I do not really have graphs, so I'm just uh, showing the, the type heat stress data that from the, the glycolytic proteins. So in conclusion, the aim is essentially really brief tool to be able to help with large scale uh, kinetic model constructions and uh, address the uh, weaknesses in the pre previous great version. And as the project goes, I will be still modifying the algorithm to be able to better optimize and run fast and things like that and come up with better models. Right. I would like to thank my supervisors and my advisors and of course the ND here is the one that uh, provided me the heat stress data that I'm playing with. And of course, my lab members there has been helping me. But thank you for listening.